welcome the second semester learners of our MBA program. In your second semester, you are having a course on marketing management. And in that course, unit 8 is all about pricing. So in these three small videos of 10 minutes duration, each about 10 minutes duration, we shall discuss the pricing unit. And in these small videos, what I have done, uh, the learning objectives which have been given at the beginning of your self-study material, self-learning material, I have taken up those six learning objectives and have divided those six learning objectives into three parts. And in first, first part, I shall take up the first two learning objectives. Uh, the first learning objective is to understand the concept of price and then to understand the role of consumer psychology in pricing. So in this small video of about 10 minutes duration, we shall discuss the concept of price. Then we shall also discuss, we shall also try to understand the role of consumer psychology in pricing. Pricing basically would be done by the marketer and for the consumer it is cost. The marketer will try to earn the revenue through pricing mechanism. So pricing is very important as you all know that a marketer is basically concerned about the four P's of marketing, the what we call the marketing mix, product, price, place, promotion. And out of these four marketing mix elements, each and every uh, one of these elements is very, very important. Product is important, so is price. Distribution is important, so is promotion. If a product is not priced well, the product will not sell. If the product is not distributed well, if the product is not communicated, the market will not come to know about the product, though it can be good product, though it can be suitably priced. So each and every element of the marketing is important. But still, out of these four mixed elements, price is one of the elements uh, which basically helps the organization, the marketer, in earning the revenue. Product development requires cost. Distribution coverage requires lots of cost, transportation, logistics, warehousing, retailer distribution discount, wholesaler discount. It involves lots of cost. Promotion, advertising has cost, sales promotion has cost, publicity has cost. All the marketing mix elements have cost. But price is the only mix element which helps the organization to generate the revenue. From that perspective, Pricing is very, very important. And price is unique in the sense that it is the easiest element of the marketing mix to adjust to the changes in the marketing environment. Product, you see development of the product, thinking about the idea, then crystallizing the idea, developing the prototype, developing the concept, yeah. then developing the brand image, launching the product in the market takes lots of time. And then after launching the product in the market, you cannot think of withdrawing it, you will have to sustain it. Likewise, advertisement also, designing an advertisement, making the advertisement feel, releasing it, it's a time-consuming affair. But product, uh, say distribution, suppose distribution, appointing a wholesaler, then continuing the relationship with the wholesaler, and you cannot think of withdrawing the wholesaler, all of a sudden, in that case, the market will suffer. So each of these elements, requires lots of time elements but price is the only one element which the marketer has the advantage of right, keeping it changing suppose today we can think about giving say five percent discount tomorrow we can think about withdrawing it tomorrow we can think about offering a say buyer allowance or suppose something like that so basically in case of pricing the marketer is a bit in an advantageous position to adjust with the changes in the marketing environment. But other elements like say product features, or say marketing communication, or the distribution channel, etc., it requires some time to adjust, reasonably longer time to adjust. And if we discuss the concept of price further, we shall also try to understand some of the other aspects. Like say, price can be defined as the amount of money uh, which is served for a product or service. Say one particular thing, suppose this mobile handset, this cost is 12,000, like that. So it's the value for money. Now value for money, whether it is monetary value 
or what is the non-monetary value. There are some non-monetary aspects also, but which are monetized. Suppose this is a brand of say Nokia. Nokia has a brand name. So that also has a cost. So that brand, that branding cost also gets associated with the monetary cost. So the consumers, that psychology, consumers among himself or herself with the consumer psyche, there are lots of processing. So it's not just only monetary value. Monetary value also involves some of the non-monetary factors which value is normally monetized by the consumer. So while consuming the product or service, so broadly speaking, price is a sum of all the values. For availing a particular product, suppose this particular product costs say rupees 12,000. This I can procure online without having, or I can go to suppose Pan Bazaar. So going to Pan Bazaar, searching for different shops, then deciding about this, it has some cost. It has got time cost, it has got money cost, it has got energy cost, it has got some psychic cost also. So psychic cost in the sense that suppose I buy the item and then I feel that the dissonance about this. So I can develop some kind of disagreement, dissatisfaction. So that also has a cost. But suppose this is a Nokia brand, it's a good quality product, I know about this. So in that case, that psychic cost is minimized. So there may not be any psychic cost. I just take an assurance that this will be a good product. So I may not have any kind of dis uh, dissonance. I may not have any kind of disagreement or dissatisfaction. So price, it's not only, it's only to rupees 12, but it's not like that. It has got a lot many other aspects also. Moreover, price is something which communicates the market about the company's proposed value. Suppose one particular ballpoint pen is priced at rupees 2. Automatically, the consumer will develop an image that this is a low price product, this is a low cost product, so this is a low value product. Its quality will not be that good. Suppose one ballpoint pen, the cost is supposed to be 500. The consumer will automatically, and that is supposed packaged well, in a very beautiful package, it has been offered in the market, the color is good, writing is good, the consumers will definitely form an image, perception, that price perception, that is a, that is a communication, that also plays a very important role in case of uh, pricing. So consumer psychology plays a very important role as far as pricing is concerned. Before processing anything, consumers often uh, actively process price related information with their existing knowledge of price from their earlier experiences. Earlier, they will relate the price with their earlier experiences. Last time I bought this kind of thing at this price, so how can this price be uh, yeah, relevant in today's context? Moreover, consumers go for a search, search with their friends, neighbors, relatives, or maybe colleagues, their primary reference groups, secondary reference groups, and they will collect different advertisement. They will see in today's context, online purchasing, the consumers will go for make an online search, will just make a price comparison, and then ultimately develop a price perception. And that price perception plays a very important role as far as paying the price for a product. How much cost will have to be incurred for availing the benefits of a product. So pricing from that perspective is very, very important. So consumer psychology for many, suppose the product is of very high quality, high price, so definitely it's a premium image. Consumers will form that image. And several studies have studied the relationship between high price and product quality. So moreover, that is in consonance. And that needs to be established by the previous information. If the consumers are getting some consistently good benefits, product features, product benefits by avoiding high prices, consumers will automatically develop an impression like that. So that consumer's process decision is highly governed, guided by the perceived price of the product. So if there, so in that context, there is a, there is a two concept of floor price and selling price. Floor price is something which is at a low level. And this is something right, that consumers will think that if something is priced below the floor price, consumers will think that this is a very low quality product, inferior product. And if it is suppose priced above the ceiling price uh, in terms of the affordability of the consumer, the consumers will withdraw that this is beyond me, I will not be able to sustain. So it, there is a range. And between that range, the consumers will decide which one to buy, which one not to buy. So consumers will set the limit. So this is not something that I will buy only the item at 600 rupees only. So consumers will fix their mind that I will buy a product, say 500 to 700. So I may buy a product at 510 rupees or may I think about buying a product at 690 rupees also whatsoever. So these are the things, uh, psychological aspects which influence 
pricing decisions. And they are one of the important things that... Why do consumers see prices like this? It varies from consumer to consumer. There are some consumers who are very highly savvy and there are some consumers who are very highly bargain seekers. They would like to go for bargaining and many times they go for reference checking, checking with their families, members, checking with their close colleagues or the primary group members and say, and the marketers will have to take pictures of these factors. That's why you'll find in the supermarkets, departmental stores, etc. They will uh, store the products in different ranges. Suppose these are the products, suppose the shelver, say these are the products which are at rupees 350. Other, uh, there will be some other racks which would be at say, 750 rupees and could be in that same floor, say 350 rupees, 750 rupees. In the upstairs, in another floor, there could be the premium ranges with added features. So the marketers will have to think about the psychological aspects of buying and accordingly they will have to make their own display arrangements. So these are the different aspects which are involved with consumer psychology and pricing. So these are the basic things which we have discussed in unit 1. We shall continue our discussion of unit 8 in our next two videos. Thank you.